Lord. Instead of the star on Hollywood Boulevard, the film noir showed the star in the shadows of the night. It was in these shadows that an atmosphere of anxiety, desperation, hopelessness was created, reflecting a very warped vision of the American dream. But it didn't start there. It was heavily influenced by German Expressionism, which reached its peak after World War I. When film noir adopted this visual style of extreme distortion to express an inner emotional reality that reflected the nightmares of war. German Expressionism was a factor, yes. But you cannot forget the influence of the hardboard crime novels by authors such as Hamet, Chandler, Hemingway. That's not what I'm saying, and you know it. Of course the pop fictions were important. But so is the Gothic romance, French poetic realism, even American Expressionism, like the Cat and the Canary. Typically, the male protagonist serves as an unreliable narrator, acting both as a participant and the spectator to the narrative. In their attempts to move on and to start anew, they inevitably fail as they are stymied by the actions of their past. The male protagonist demonstrates a test of one's code of living, walking this fine line to see if they go against this code. But behind the tough facade of the three-piece suit, fedora and trench coat, a darker characteristic is hidden. A sexual paranoia, a fear of the woman as powerful. In this pursuit of the femme fatale, the male suffers from an existential struggle a questioning of his own moral compass with a severe lack of conviction. This could be seen as him being a victim of his environment, however. Enticed by the prospect of romance, the male is often robbed by his own free will by the femme fatale. This woman has an overriding effect on the male's ability to act, to be rational, to understand the significance of his actions. In this lack of self-control, a turn to alcoholism signifies a potential for the male to spill over into a world of disillusion. The femme fatale is an antagonizing force fueled in her own sexual desire, transforming into deception, trickery, and ultimately, murder. It's a lot more complicated than that. She's a mirror image of the man at a time when women were controlled, manipulated, and financially dependent on men. The femme fatale is a violent cry out for independence. She transgresses the boundaries of the conventional nuclear family one could argue that she is an extremity of this outcry as she is willing to kill and die for her own desires. What? And the man isn't. Just as the man is alienated by society, the woman is too, by her being oppressively symbolised as a womb of love and safety. The post-war society is also reflected by the loneliness of the city. This is a place where the individual is swallowed up. Exactly. The city reveals the desperation and hopelessness of the people via the use of shadows and the occasional bursts of sunlight. And has anything really changed? The underbelly of society still comes out at night in bars and the lights of the city be it the 70s neon of Taxi Driver or the 90s sci-fi chrome of Strange Days. Yes, noir has evolved into something more violent, but so has cinema. And of course you can't not mention Blade Runner when talking about neo-noir. Blade Runner is the quintessential evolution of the noir genre, transporting it to a sci-fi environment but still maintaining the characteristics of a 40s noir. This time the problems being shown are those of globalization, urban decay, and mass migration. Noir will always reflect the fears of our time. Recently, our culture has been obsessed with the anxiety of the war on terror, the media's role in our society, and even the stagnation of progress and racial tensions. It's not a question of will film noir affect the future of cinema. It's a question of when, as the streets will continue to offer something darker than night.